Esiku dede asikui. Hello everyone, it's Adirunke again. I hope your day is going well. I hope everything is okay. Um, I just want to briefly touch on the contributions of animals to the Yoruba race and why they need to be respected. I believe that we know <laughs> inherently that without animals many of our ancestors would not have survived the contributions of animals that were domesticated because <laughs> they have special places in our hearts the, all the animals do but the animals that we've been able to domesticate hold you know close connections to us I apologize in advance if there are pauses in between as I speak. In spirituality, animals, they give us everything, their lives, everything in our day-to-day -day lives. Maybe not so much now that we have bicycles and cars, but even with movement, the contributions of donkeys, donkeys, camels in some parts of Africa, they weren't many of them in the Yoruba land. The ones that came in, came in through Ausa, Fulani connections. They're just not native to present day Nigeria as far as their numbers. Donkeys, horses, camels, where and when applicable. What other animal helps you move from one place to another? Physically, they're, they've been there for us from the beginning of time. Spiritually, they lay down their lives. They pass messages to us. Sometimes if a deity or a spirit wants to warn us about something or tell us something, a bird, an animal, something would cross our path that we would recognize as a message instantly. Maybe not so much now with the influence of Christianity and Islam and the encouragement and the discouragement against things of that nature that those religious paths preach. Animals were always, and I believe I can boldly say that even to this day, have always been important parts of our lives as individuals and as a race. As a matter of fact, our histories would not be complete without animals. If you look at our orikis, I'm trying to think of an English equivalent for oriki, but you know, oriki is oriki. You can say hiulaji, panegyric, old, you know, whatever applies, whether the person you're, uh, talking about is alive or dead <laughs> but oriki is oriki i would not try to find an exact english translation for that let it just be what it is oriki is oriki a lot of our praises praise poetry that we offer to our ancestors or people from our lineage clearly show our connection to animals whether at some point you know certain animals did things for us certain birds animals did things for us and through that oriki through that praise speech <laughs> not it's usually not a speech it's like in poetry form through that heology People from that lineage are encouraged not to arm that bird or eat that bird. People from that area know that they're not supposed to arm or eat the bird that is identified as Eyega. Even the names, the Oriki names, there's Oriki in the poetry form and Oriki in the name form. Akpike Oki, my Oriki is Akpike. Akpike Oki, Akpike the Peacock, it appeals to beauty, Akpike the Peacock, 
or king's peacock in Yoruba. So even the way that we praise ourselves, we look at animals and we ask, we, our ancestors, okay, <laughs> maybe not today because what I'm trying to drive at is the disrespect that animals suffer on a day-to-day -day basis, even amongst the Yoruba people. Akonieku. Obele giri giri bare leru. Obele giri giri pere nija. Akoni eku. Akoni di tiger. Obesile giri giri bare leru. Obesile giri giri pere nija. Akoni the tiger who jumps down from whatever platform. Obesile giri giri pere nija. It jumps down from whatever platform is on and while feeling his own self and the extent of his own power is ready to challenge his own self that's literally how much power he has he has the power is so much it feels the intensity so much he could fight his own self <laughs> all right that's an animal being mentioned even our proverbs and sayings however i, I noticed that with the proverbs and sayings sometimes <laughs> they um, portray animals in a powerful state and sometimes in a not so powerful state but the animals are used as metaphors to drive home a point they're used to teach they're used to what okay <laughs> my ancestors wanted me to talk about this because when it comes to the yoruba history the people that we forget okay not people the beings the beings that have been with us from the very beginning that we sometimes disrespect that we sometimes forget to ask that we sometimes forget to be kind to that are able to tell us our own history better than we can tell our own selves if only we respect them if only we listen to nature are the animals after some of them allowed themselves to be domesticated because a part of their own purpose was to help us animals were always with us helping us guiding us if you want to know if there's a way somewhere, observe the kind of animals that you see around. If one path can lead to another path, observe to see if you can hear this, the footsteps of an animal. As a matter of fact, sometimes our ancestors would starve and these animals would be so kind to lay down their own. If, if there's no food to eat, okay, <laughs> and the ancestor is uh carnivorous or omnivorous in which they take meat and they're probably stranded somewhere they are too tired to to hunt anything all they have is a fire and they're they're weak then our connection with animal was with animals was so high that an animal could come closer and intentionally let themselves be hunted easily just so that that ancestor would be able to roast the meat with the fire that they have and be satisfied so that they can continue their journey so we go way back with animals and their sacrifice with proverbs like kekere la bekeri kunshebimi fadie the needle might be small but the hen or chicken whatever <laughs> the chicken cannot swallow it it's like a way of it's a <laughs> it's a self appraisal kind of thing in which you make yourself the needle and you make whoever it is that that is trying to hurt you the hen and obviously the hen is a much bigger animal even in size and all in comparison to the needle but then you when you say kekere la bekere cooking she mimi fadia you're saying i might be small in comparison to this power in comparison to this person but 
they know better than to mess with me because I will ruin their intestines and I will destroy their system. Or if, or if they could just be an individual, powerful individual. I will destroy. They might be able to, to some degree, express their power over me. But the moment that I'm swallowed, it would be a mess from that moment on. Things would be messy. Another proverb is, <laughs> there are millions of proverbs from the very day that the Yoruba race started, however it started. But <laughs> obviously we've lost many because not only are we bilingual, you know, lots of people don't, uh, lots of people speak more English than Yoruba. And when you live in the modern world, it almost seems like you can't help it. Depending on where you work, if you spend eight, nine hours at work, you know, every day, all right you meet with your friends many of them are not yoruba language speakers at the end of the day you're probably only speaking the language three hours in a day maybe to your mother when she calls or something so we're speaking less of the language and we're using less proverbs we're using less metaphors and now that we can write proverbs and someone can say it online and say oh i would like to learn that proverb we only began to <laughs> To, to write the Yoruba language when, just recently, things were passed on from, you know, mouth to mouth, word of mouth, way of passing information on, but when a country is colonized or, you know, the culture is taken away, the children that the history have been passed on to have little time for learning or preserving the culture what they want to know is what shakespeare said and what they want to do is memorize the old dictionary so they can use big big words amongst their friends in nigeria the more big <laughs> in certain settings the more big words you use the more educated you seem to the semi-illiterates like you some people don't think that being well versed in the yoruba language but unable to speak a word in english is still literacy the ability to read and write it doesn't it, it doesn't have to be the ability to read and write the english language or any other language except the one that is native to you the one that you feel most comfortable with one more proverb the chameleon that walks in such a coquettish, beautiful, patient way dies. You can now imagine what would happen to the frog that slams himself or herself on the ground. You know, frogs hop, you know, hop. So it's like saying even the person that is careful dies. You can imagine what happens to someone who, who isn't careful, who doesn't take things easy. <laughs> they will probably die faster. When it comes to metaphors, you can say that about someone who <laughs> comes out of nowhere to enjoy a form of luxury that they really haven't worked for or contributed to in a, in a, in any way a similar one to that would be orefon lavata or your betty you see an elephant <laughs> uh dead by the by the edge of the river actually let me just say the river bank okay let me just go with river bank you see an elephant there and you bring out your knife in order to cut the meat into pieces, you know, and maybe take home or share with your friends or whatever. Do you think the elephant died because he or she drank too much water? Obviously, someone must have been involved in the hunting of the animal. So I can go on and on and on about that. Even with our spirituality, our medicine. And this you won't, do you won't find documented anywhere else. So 
as much as this is Yoruba history, this is to some degree esoteric as well because I can't back it up with any visual fact. As a matter of fact, a lot of things that have to do with the Yoruba history, with the books and everything, many of them are absolutely wrong. People just, you know, <laughs> make up a story or take some fabricated story that has been passed on to them and write a book and call it the history of a particular set of people or the history of something sometimes it's not always true and most of those usually start from like the 10th <laughs> century or 11th century or they don't go as far back as when we started what the original truth is so uh, I'm always very skeptical about what I read, but this I know because it was an ancestor who told me, uh, again, <laughs> this is esoteric. The act of observing animals to see if something would work on humans is not new. All right. It happened with our ancestors as well. Even before certain animals were domestic, like the dog providing their, um, company <laughs> dogs keeping us company cats and eh. <laughs> maybe even till now a lot of our people don't like don't like cats they're so in the you know we are communal people cats are not so communal and then along the line in history the people started associating cats with witchcraft and all that so yeah we have a messy relationship with cats that we need to <laughs> find resolutions for fast before we keep hurting them our ancestors then the very first set of yoruba herbalists when they were observing what a particular leaf or plant could do they would stay at a point <laughs> of course it's not like now that people disrespect animals by putting them in labs and expecting that somehow the results that they get would be accurate you take a are you stupid you excuse me excuse me apologize you take an animal out of an animal's habitat and you put them in an uncomfortable situation and you expect that the way that they react whatever you result you get from that would be 100 percent accurate and somehow would have the exact same effect on humans whenever they're in their own elements <laughs> uh that's ridiculous that doesn't make any sense whatsoever you don't observe an animal in an animal's habitat you take an animal out of their habitat you put them in a cage and you expect that the way that they react would be the exact same way that all monkeys whenever they are in their own habitat not out would react in that same situation and somehow a human in that situation or even in their own comfortable space would act the same way it doesn't make any sense to me this is how our ancestors did it they would stand back and I'm not saying ancestors Ajayikra the ancestors colonized the ancestors because ancestors their ancestors and their ancestors. There were some of our ancestors who disrespected our original ancestors and not just lightly, you know, disrespected them highly. <laughs> so when we say ancestors, please know what I mean. But again, <laughs> no hard feelings, right? We're supposed to learn from, <laughs> we're supposed to learn <laughs> respect, a lot of respect to Baba Jaikro. <laughs> It always seems like I'm so mad at him, but yeah, I, I heard a voice right now that, that is telling me to, to, <laughs> to, to be calm <laughs> when it comes to some of the mistakes that he may have made in his, uh, last incarnation as Samuel Ajayi Uh, okay. I apologize. You know, we're supposed to love and learn from their lessons. Nobody's perfect. If we were in their shoes, we'd probably do the exact same, <laughs> same thing. Our ancestors would stand at a distance and observe. If a monkey is here, they would watch what the mother would do. The mother of the monkey would do. 
they would watch the kind of leaf that the mother of the monkey puts in his mouth or her mouth. They would watch how the mother of the monkey holds that, that child. They would observe the kind of leaves or plants that they make the baby monkey chew on, however lightly or at least um, sniff. And they will note it. And they will note it. Ewe botuje. The one that we now call Dongo Yaro. All these herbs that cure some kind of pox or some kind of malaria or some kind of bite. If something bit the, the monkey and the monkey was frantic, they would watch what the, what the community community of monkeys would do in that situation and sometimes somehow the monkeys knew that they were learning so they would let them watch again there was mutual respect so there was no need to scare the humans away or now when you observe animals whenever they are near humans especially like monkeys you can see that they are terrified of us if you feed them bananas they're, they're scared to take the banana from you because they just don't trust us like the you My, Michael Jackson said what about elephants have we lost their trust we have lost not have we no we we lost their trust like centuries ago so uh we have lost their trust they will let us watch if the monkey had some kind of infection or some kind of the humans would watch. Our ancestors would stay at a distance and watch. The leaves that the monkeys used to help them feel better. How they expressed emotions. Whether they distanced themselves from that monkey for a bit or not. To let them know if it's something that, if it happens with humans, would require that uh, the rest of the community... Uh, let them isolate for a bit, you know, it depend, they would observe. We learned from these animals, there was mutual respect. The, the disrespect came soon after though. So, uh, uh, uh the, the disrespect definitely came soon after. One disrespectful thing that we did to animals, each animal has their own individual, beautiful, important way of living the same way that africans <laughs> feel uncomfortable when they're all referred to as africans by white people which really just diminishes each individual like culture that same way we do worse with monkeys there are different kinds of monkeys even to say is the same way you say oh are you from africa excuse me am i from where enough okay in some situations it would be okay maybe that would be a bad example in some situations it would be okay to say yes i'm african and i'm from here you know the same way that we would do that even amongst humans it's much worse amongst animals when you do that you don't learn the individual lesson that each being each group of beings is, is going to teach. When you say all Nigerians, you don't learn about the Igbos, about the Afik, about the Yoruba, about the Ausa, about the, the Fulani, about the Tiv, about the Nupe, about the Edo, about the Urobo, about you don't learn about each of these cultures that exist within Nigeria. You say all oh, Nigerians, as if we all are. That, that's the same thing that we do to animals. And it's much worse because even among each group of animals, you don't you don't just say in certain situations you don't you don't just say all oh, black people act like this is something we ate but we do to animals. Anyway, I digress. Of all the animals that have felt this disrespect, especially post um, colonialism and slavery and inv inv invasions of that nature, monkeys have suffered the most. And how are we going to learn the history of our relationship with monkeys if we try to distance ourselves from the from them as much as possible or mistreat them when we see them out of resentment because 
some ignorant white person sometime in the 17th or 18th or 19th century said uh, black people are monkeys ignoring ignoring these stupid assumptions lessons that have been passed on by this stupid <laughs> that doesn't sound very light worker like does it but anger gets things done this ridiculous persons ignoring these statements is a form of defiance against colonialism against slavery against genocides and imperialism and whatever whatever form that they exist in all the forms that they exist in this particular form when it comes to animals so the fact that black people don't want to take pictures anywhere near hates baboons or monkeys today or they don't want to be involved in any advocacy for their protection whatsoever or they don't want to even stand near them so that no white people or surprisingly fellow black people won't call them Otabenga and the fact uh, sometimes black we we have to do better among we have alien to do even as a race because we are so mean to one another we are t we mirror what Europeans or non African people non Yoruba people say about us amongst our own selves we use it in the way that we insult one another even within the within the community which is terrible in order to not humans are ungrateful so that we would not uh, somehow fulfill the prophecy that we are <laughs> that we are big monkeys and big apes okay like i said that's ignorance pay no mind but the fact that people would pay a lot of mind to it and it, it just shows that perhaps we need to think perhaps we need to think I don't want to make this video any longer than this, but I hope you think about it and think about how it applies to you and your treatment of animals. Nowadays, all the laws, all the regulation, actually many of them did not even need to be established by law because respect for nature, survival on nature was just inherent. If you survive, if you have to survive on something, you would respect it. Trust me. If whatever you do would somehow be repaid to you, if you do good, you get it. If you're kind to nature, you get the results. If you plant, the crops grow. If you treat the land properly, it gives you, gives you food, gives you the fertility that you require. Even with vultures, vultures are seen as birds of the elders. Vultures look old. So w when we say elders, it's not just they are elders like, you know, your grandpa or your grandma and they are elders. A child could be 15 years old, but they could be really, really old on soul level. They could be someone's grandfather reincarnated, but I, I haven't addressed reincarnation amongst the Yoruba yet. My last name is Babajide. For example, in my family, in my lineage, you know, reincarnation is embraced. Um, but this is not the video. What I'm asking is that you please think about your treatment of animals, your reverence for animals and, and your manner of approach to beings, other human beings, but all other beings living and <laughs> non-living again that's that's going to be quite complex uh to to explain but nature plants the way that you relate to them please do think about it and ask yourself have i been treating them with respect or not i'm going to hand it here if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask uh, please support my channel in the many ways that you do. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your day and goodbye.
Thank you.